Hey everyone, um, back from a big week firefighting this week and feeling fairly shattered and um, today I have a little black cat sitting on my knee so for those of you on the video podcast we'll probably get photobombed at some point uh, and I apologize in advance if the purring is rather loud um, <laughs> but uh, yeah so like massive week, um, the team did really well, crew did really well um, for those of you that are not in New Zealand and haven't seen the news we had a, a big fire in a little holiday town um, down south here in uh, Canterbury and um, thankfully no one was uh, killed or injured um, but there was a lot of property destroyed so um, it was pretty devastating for the residents. Uh, our fire crew got deployed as rural firefighters. We um, we often don't get involved in the structural stuff. We are often out and about on farms and bush bashing and um, yeah just a really great week with some good mates. Um, we've got a really quite tight team um, firefighting teaches you a lot about teamwork and uh, what I want to share this week was actually I, um, I was reflecting on had a couple of things go on with uh, one particular client um, just around uh, they're at a really critical point in the project and, um, and we're kind of coming to the crunch and go live dates for new software um, and they made a really brave decision this week and there was something really lovely around the way that that decision was made and um, it actually got me reflecting on, um, I, I guess, kind of how different it was when I started. Um, you know, sometimes I will get a little ahead of myself and sort of talk about what it looks like to be operating in um, in a world that it may be quite foreign for some people that are kind of new to this. So I actually just wanted to share the the tale of two projects, um, the two different stories, and and um, and I guess two a couple of different decisions about go live and, um, and, you know, project management practices. And really it's a story about relationships. So, um, Arthur, if for if any reason you happen to be watching this video, the, the story will be rather familiar to you. Um, <laughs> Hey man, what's up? <laughs> um, so when I like, so the first story is my, actually my first software project. It was my first project that I was, um, I was kind of given to run and, um, we were in the middle of um, we're building some software. We'd had a company that had built this piece of software for us. They were finishing off their testing, and they were about to hand over to um, to our uh, test environments for us as the client to start doing that testing. Um, we were handing over for system integration testing, for those of you who are software nerds. And um, so Arthur and I were the project managers, we were counterparts in the two different organizations and we're in the middle of some, I guess, some fairly tense, um, fairly heated kind of governance conversations. And um, I just, I, I remember, I loved working with Arthur, it, would, it, would, it was a lot of fun. So we would get into these meetings once a week and, um, you know, we would sit there as the client and say, are you ready? And the vendor would say back to us, well, are you ready? We're ready when you're ready. And, and everybody, there's all this posturing around a date. And um, and stuff was getting pretty heated, right? Like we had contract dates. We had, um, you know, financial incentives to hit dates. We had financial penalties if we didn't hit dates on both sides. Um, and it became, it, like it was easy for that relationship to deteriorate and to become really kind of, um, uh, I, I guess, strained. Um, and so Arthur and I, in an effort to keep things real, used to go for coffee after these meetings. And so we'd sit in this governance meeting and, um, and kind of go back and forth at each other, you know, adversaries on either side of the trench. And then Arthur and I would go for coffee. And I remember Arthur saying to me one day, he's like, hey, how about next week, you can take, like, we'll just switch sides. You take my side, and you can pretend like all of the uh, system testing is done, and you're going to be ready for Monday two weeks from now. He said, I'll sit in your shoes, and I'll pretend like your test environments are ready to take our software in two weeks' time. Like, just for just for laughs, right? Just for shits and giggles. And, um, and like, it was just the absurdity of the whole situation. And um, I think what I really appreciated about working with Arthur was that, you know, even in all of that, you have your ups and downs, but even in all of that, like, there was there was a level of um, realness and truthfulness around, we all know what's going on here. Neither of us is ready, but, you know, we're all pushing for these dates. And Anyway, so... Um, so that was that was my first big software project, and I think that was a lot of like I still see that a lot 
today um, I think it's very easy to get into that space where you're running a contract you've got dates to hit you know um, and it can get really adversarial and this week what was funny was that I sat in um, one meeting where I could feel myself kind of in that same situation of like all very serious and we're gonna hit numbers and then this other really beautiful conversation that happened um, where actually we had so almost similar setup right like I've got a client who is turning on a new piece of software. Um, we had a date in mind and we got uh, on the phone with a group of us from the client side and um, someone who would, I would call a partner uh, who is effectively building the software, getting it ready to be turned on for this client. And the conversation was very different. The conversation was not about, are you going to hit the date and, you know, pushing through. The conversation went, give me the real stuff. What are we doing? Do we push it a week? Do we, you know, what what's it actually look like? Don't don't give me the fluff. Don't give me the we will be ready. Don't don't exhaust your team trying to get stuff organized, knowing full well that all we're doing is pushing everybody at 110% and we don't have the capacity to hand handle the curveballs as they come up. Um, on both sides right like let's actually have a real conversation about what makes sense and there were so many beautiful elements there was uh the wonderful level of trust that was displayed by executives in their team who are making decisions they said we trust you to make this decision there was beautiful trust between the people that were actually executing this particular decision and uh people who i will call partners not vendors Um, there were real conversations about, hey, I'm scared about this. Um, And again, on both sides. And there were real conversations about, I know we all want to hit it with a sledgehammer and just get this thing done, but what's right for the greater good? Uh, And it it was wonderful to be able to reflect on, you know, over the last must be sort of 15 years almost now, um, the the shift and the difference in that conversation. And I guess I wanted to share that because I want you to know that that's there for you too. So if you're in this place where you're currently in a very reactive adversarial kind of relationship with your partners, um, that's okay. There's also a better way. And if you keep working at it, you can get to that place of really real conversations, you know, um, the the conversations around what's best for everybody and a conversation where we all get a little bit vulnerable and go, I know that we all said this and I know we'll push this day and I know that everybody's riding on it and I know it feels like failure to push it out and I know that it feels like we're just dragging things on and, you know, but actually this makes sense. Um, and for everybody to collectively breathe a sigh of relief and to know that that's the right thing. So, um, or conversely, you know, it could have just as easily gone the other way and, and, um, you know, because of that level of trust and that relationship that's there between all parties on the team, it could have just as easily gone the other way and said, no, nah, let's just like, let's knuckle down and smash this thing because we've got each other's back um, and we're able to help each other through this. So yeah, I just, I wanted to share those, those two stories because it, it triggered me this week. I was thinking about it and I thought how different, like how different from when I started to where we are now and how different the conversations, how different the relationships. Um, and, and also I, and also I want to say thank you to Arthur for, um, for setting me on that path for, you know, for realizing that even in some of some pretty tight circumstances, you can, you know, you can still choose to be a human being. Um, Arthur chose to do that and, um, and I appreciate him for that. And, um, so yeah, even in the most adversarial circumstances, you can still choose to be a human being and, Uh, If you keep working at it, you can get to a place where you can actually have a really human conversation. Um, So that's all I wanted to share today. And, um, and I hope that story helps. You know, sometimes we, sometimes it can be hard to bridge the gap from where we are today to where we're going to be. Sometimes, you know, you hear the optimistic, um, you know, there's, there's a better place um, and, and it seems a little far away. So um, it's been a long journey. I've learned a whole heap along the way, but I wanted to share both of those stories and just let you know that, yeah, there's, there's a pathway, there's a journey there, um, and we can choose to make good choices no matter where we are on that path. So um, that's it from me this week. 
Um, Kat says hi as well. Um, he's about to get his face right in the middle of the camera, so I'm going to hang up now. <laughs> but I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Um, and I would love to hear from you. Please drop me a comment below. Um, I love I love hearing from you on email and on comments. Um, oftentimes, your questions and your comments actually trigger me to um, to choose what it is that I talk about for the um, for the next the next little instalment. So um, yeah, hit me up. Have a great week. And um, we'll see you very soon.